So, Shadows of Malice. Um, I was really glad to see this uh, turn up on my uh, newsfeed uh, recently. Um, I've only been board gaming for a relatively short period of time, about three years maybe, something like that. And I mainly do solo board gaming. And when I was doing my research about what games to buy, this kept getting mentioned quite a bit, particularly as I like fantasy stuff. And the issue was that then, that it was out of print, and it looked like it was a fairly small run that they had done, so there weren't many games out there. Didn't even seem to be any copies on the second-hand market. Uh, as you can see from this, though, they've done a revised second printing, which just came completely out of the blue. So it's absolutely delighted to, <laughs> to see that happen. Uh, what attracts me to this game, um, if we just turn it over a second uh, before we open the box, is it the style of the mapping and, and the cards are actually, and, and pretty much the iconography, but everything about it reminds me of old retro role-playing games that I used to play when I was uh, a kid or, or younger. Um, and uh, particularly, uh, in a way, the Ultima series, which are my pretty much my favourite games. So I really like the art style, and that's what really sort of stood out to me. And um, so, yeah, so very glad to see it. And... Um, what we should do is let's have a quick look inside the box. Now, somewhere I cheated earlier. Yeah, here we go. Save me wrestling with the uh, cellophane, he said. And then wrestles with the cellophane. There we go. So you see, it's quite a min in some ways, a fairly minimalist um, design. Well, particularly the front of the box. Just that, that uh, icon there, which is uh, representing the big bad. Let's have a quick look, see how it looks like inside. Relatively small box, actually, by today's standards. So, clearly, as you'd expect, we have a instruction manual. Which is uh, colour, as they do tend to be, to be fair. So we've got a bit of storyline here at the beginning. The avatars of... Atheos will go with. No one can correct me apart from the guy who's uh, created it. And I think also that that's something about this that that kind of ties into the uh, Ultima series. That the main character in the Ultima series is called the Avatar. And I, I don't know if the game's designer is also a fan, but it just seems uh, coincidental in a way that that if if not, that that's the word he decided to use for the player characters. So let's have a quick flip through and see how. The pages it has. Before we do that, so actually, this has a. I don't know if any of you have played Four Against Darkness, but um, to me as well, some of the mechanics of this seem quite familiar to that. In in that there are there is random generation in this case of creatures or monsters or, or whatever within within it, which just sort of keeps it fresh. Um, and that, that's something again that that in a way reminds me of old style. Uh, RPGs because obviously you wouldn't see the mechanics of that happening, but um, you know there will be sort of tables being run in the background that you don't see. Whereas here, obviously, they're up front and centre. So, in terms of numbers of pages, it's make sure I got to the end. Thirty-nine, fairly small pages, fairly big text. So I don't think it's you know overly complicated. Hopefully, and we have uh, two two sizes two sizes of die. why that is, not having played the game. A huge amount of uh, crystals, so you have white crystals, red crystals, oh, yellow crystals, blue, and white. And we have, hmm. so these are treasure, I would say it looks like items, treasure is a much more exciting way of expressing that. Unfortunately, I didn't pre-open these. Getting that. There we go, I think. Yeah, there we go. To be honest, I don't want to look through too many of these because I quite like to uh, for these to be new to me when I play the game. If I could, if I ever open them, that is as a distinct possibility. That there we go. That may never happen. So if we just have a sort of quick a soul. Phylactery, I reckon that's pronounced. 
So again, very simple, um, yet stylized art. Obviously these different colors mean something, I'm, I'm guessing, it might be rarity. Given that these things have got slightly more um, highfalutin titles, maybe. So these are the uh, the treasure and, and items that you can find. And we have mastery, which sounds like skills, I'm guessing. There we go, I actually found a little thingy this time. Yeah, so they do look like skills if you read that one there. Oh, what's your creature skills? So just to make sure these are the same backs, so they're not. Right, so we have mastery. That's a creature, isn't it? Creature ability. So these are some of the creature abilities. So again, when you're rolling on that table, from what I understand, as well as that generating the monster, it tells you that you pick up, I think at random, um, one of these cards, which then gives the monster extra things like death gaze, which doesn't sound too much fun. Uh, they are horrific, crafty. And again, we've got different colors denoting something or other. And then the mastery cards, I would imagine are skills for us, or say us, the players, avatars. Yes, these actually sound a bit like classes. Well, actually that one did. Uh, battle strategy, yes, it could be. Light bender. Again, color coded. Curse warder. Avatar cannot be cursed. Well, you can read it. Um, so yeah, so they're sort of skills, come classes that you can, that you're, as a player character, you can have. Oh, more mastery cards. Sure, these are they're not right. So we've got a few more mastery cards, and then some more treasure. That's fate. I'm not sure what fate does. Ah, this sounds like um, yeah, it just sounds like random events, maybe. We could actually evade. It almost sounds like spells as well. Actually, yeah, it sounds a bit more like a spell, doesn't it? Uh, so, yeah, I've got instants, yeah. Yeah, so, yeah, so, so we've got instant. Sorry, I didn't look that, see that at the top. You guys may have spotted that whilst I was going through. So, we've got instant, invoked, lasting. So, again, it is kind of like a spell by the sound of it. So like permanent buffs or actually debuffs, or curse of weakness. Yeah, curse of putrefaction. Lots of long words in here for me to try and say. We've got some tiny little small cards, which as you can see, say potion. Let's see. And I imagine these are all potions, from what I can tell, because the art on the bottom is also a potion. Even open that one, all right, there we go. So yeah, liquid rage. Getting colour coded for what? For the reasons that will become apparent once we've read the rules. Draft of Night, Regeneration Potion. So, the, yeah, the black here almost sounds like a. Yeah. Yeah, like a necromancery style type of magic. Whereas this just looks like blood magic, given it's red and some of the things it does. Flash from Grenade. Oh, yeah, sounds very really cool. And oh, these are much bigger than I was thinking. Oh, oh, get more crystals. Some baggies. And actually, yeah, these are um, these are the map tiles that say first drew me to the game. And they look they look actually a lot bigger than I was. It's, for some reason, I thought they'd be smaller than that. So I th for memory, this is um, again from watching a video a while back. This is sort of the shadow realm or something, which is where the the main villain resides, and then he can 
pop out into the world from here. So it's like the underworld, whatever you want to call it. And these are the map tiles. So if I, yeah, it looks like they're sort of that way up. Uh, Assuming this is creatures. I know there are cities on here that you can go to. Actually, that C for city. No doubt. Don't know what M is for. Okay, so they're single sided. And again, I'm not 100% clear on whether you use all of these map tiles all the time or whether you can just play off a single one. Uh, you know, depending on how long you want the playtime to be or something along those lines. And then we have some trays of count or some counters. So these here are your represent your avatars. And actually, they are they're also color coded. So that, uh, which may or may not be relevant. Here's the creature generator on there and also so I can't get this in I'll put it in sideways you know, just put your head slightly um, so yeah this these are so you're rolling on here so the type of terrain you're in then you're rolling to see what type of monster that you have what power they have and the number of abilities is, is what we were looking at earlier wasn't it yeah so these um, so how many of those that they have they have so they could be both well, let's draw two and see so they could be a both a wound caster and a, I don't know, have an exoskeleton, whatever it might be. So, so it puts in quite a lot of variety into the type of monsters that you could have. And I know that the designer has said that he wants people to sort of use their imagination. So you have you know, a flying monster that's got an, ex, you know, an exoskeleton on it or, or whatever it might be. And then you sort of come up with your own ideas as to what that might be. So an exoskeleton, I guess, could be a dragon or something on those lines. And then on here, we have a, a cheat sheet or whatever you want to call it, a reference guide to various different things. <laughs> Interestingly, the, the uh, yeah, it just tells you that's green, which I guess you can kind of see, but maybe this is for color blind people or whatever. Um, so it doesn't seem to have any name for the, the color coding. It just is what it is. Uh, these are, I think, health or wound tokens. You see on the other side, we've got wound and drain. So these are your avatars, as we were saying earlier. Oops. I think, other than this counter sheet, no, no, it's not a counter sheet. More of those, and more whatever those are. Don't know, they have nothing on the back. And then these are the, this is representing, I'm guessing, the, it's on the front of the box, so that's going to be the baddie. Oh, here we go, yeah, so these are the cities, and that's the, we're still not sure, are we, what those are. But I think this is, the cities are sort of randomly placed at the beginning, I seem to remember, and these are the things that they specialise in, which I can't remember at the moment. That obviously looks like a potion. That clearly looks like healing. That's to do with fate, I'm guessing, because that's what's on the back of the cards. I think the same with these. So I think these are the light wells. And again, these are obviously telling you something when you flip them over. So there we go, an unboxing of Shadows of Malice. I almost forgot what it was called then. I'm <laughs> really looking forward to playing it. So it, I just absolutely love the graphic design of it. Um, and also the game just sounds you know, really fun and reminds me of um, all those uh, teenage years when I should have been out doing something a lot more fun that teenagers should be doing, but I was playing uh, computer role-playing games. So I hope you enjoyed the video and uh, please like if you, if you did. That's great. Thanks a lot. Bye.